What's going on, man? Detroit, man. We back with another one, man. I'm sick, man. And we back with another one. Your boy Kwame, man, here, man. And this, this right here, we got something special, man. I just want everybody to know, you know, we got, we got a legend in the building, a, a Detroit pioneer, someone that you can call a legend, an icon, someone that you can go back and find out where Detroit started this music wave from the, this man been in the game since the 90s, you understand me? So I'm just proud to give my, you know what I'm saying, flowers to this guy right here. He's one of our own, one of our top, you could, however you want to put it, top five, top seven, top whatever, he's the top, you know what I'm saying? Just put it like that, you know, he making history. He dominated through the 90s to the 2000s, he's still doing his thing, you know, he got a new generation of guys, you know, with him today, man, it is just history that's being made, and, and I just want to give my flowers to you, man, and we got big hurt in the building, man. How you feeling today, man? What up, though? How y'all feeling today, man? Yeah. It's, 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 I just want to take it, take, take it to the start, man, like, because I seen the interview, you know what I'm saying, you was rapping, like, in back in the day, man, like, how, like, what was the motion back then? Like, where did you, in the 90s, where, like, what particular year did you but really, I started like in the 80s, Man. like mid 80s. Let me That's take that started. back then. He started in the 80s yeah. then. Y'all just heard it out of the year. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the 90s was the whole like rock bottom era. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But we started in the 80s as far as trying to do it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you keep going and get better and better. You know, you start learning how the game works. If you love it, you keep pushing hard and go hard and, you know, it paid off, man. So, you know, it's been a long journey. Man, because. You know, since I was born, man, I'm 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 not even exaggerating. You know, what I'm saying no lie. You know, y'all was like the first rappers that I ever heard in life. You understand me? I'm born in '94, so you do the math. You know what I'm saying? You do the math. So I remember me six years old singing every lyric. You know what I'm saying? The KDs, the Blaze, the Jesse James, the Wines. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was like the top. Y'all and Pac and Nas was it for me. You know what I'm saying? Like real shit, man. Y'all started the shit, man. So how do you feel when you listening to these new artists and you just sit back one day and you just be like, man, I, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? You put that stamp down for us. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we tried to open the door a little, man. You know, we try to get some respect, basically. Because okay. then we started, they weren't even looking for Detroit at all. You know what I'm saying? As far as rap, it was East Coast, New York, mostly. Cali, you know what I'm saying? A little sprinkles of the South here and there, but man, it was the two markets, uh, New York and LA, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So as it kept going, the game kept going, you know, we finally got some respect and notoriety. Then you had cats like Eminem, he got a situation, okay. shout out to him, you know? But it wasn't like the street hood shit. Yeah, you know, you we know he's super lyrical and that's what we take respect. Mm -hmm. But that kind of started, <clears throat> putting a little eye on Detroit and this and that. So, you know, we came hard, man, that shit. So, uh, even before us, though, it was awesome. Dre's, hey, so who was you Rose, before you? Who was you listening All of that, bro. So, you came young, but before we even came out, man, you had, like, awesome Dre, Smiley, uh, Dre to the D, Merciless Amir. It was always been a Detroit hip-hop thing, man, it's like in the 80s, you know what I'm saying? In a spell off, it ain't a man in a land I won't tell off or beat down. The concrete ground in the street, right here in Motown, my town, Detroit murderous. Yes, the city's quite scary. And so that's when the box was off. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You pay like $2 or something, they had to play the video and shit like that. That was what we had. Wasn't no social media. <clears throat> See, other people fail to realize too, man, the move we, moving we, we had, our movement, we didn't have no social media. Right. No YouTube, no none of that shit, no MySpace, nothing, bro. This was out the mud. Niggas be saying they got out the mud. You know, we got we got the mud for real, bro. We still carrying boxes to the record stores, and CDs and wax and cassettes and shit like that. Now you can just line people up, boom, hit button, send it to everybody. So technology done made it a lot easier, a lot better, which you're supposed to. So I'm glad that people benefit from it. But our ground was real ground, man. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, I just names of people you didn't right. know about. Like, who is that? But if you go back and watch Austin Dre, some of his videos, he even got people in there who stars in, in the world right now, as far as like acting and stuff like wow. that. Desi. 
Excuse me, Austin Dre. I want to be a rapper. What does rap really stand for? People are like, oh, that's what Don from. He in the video, I'm sure. Like, Austin Dre was signed priority. Mm -hmm. Who out, you know, they out of business now, but if you go watch that NWA movie, that's why Ice Cube was getting into it when he told the officer that was priority records he was signed. Uh, yeah. Austin Dre was signed with that. Oh, M and WA, right out of Detroit, man. Boss was signed with Def Jam, first female Def Jam. I gotta pull all that up and learn a lot of the facts because a lot of cats he is young, so right. you don't know nothing unless somebody tell you about it a lot of times. You only know the 90s, like that's right, the 90s, right. but we, it's way before that, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, them just some little couple of fun facts. Mm -hmm. We'll pull it up, boss. Out of Detroit, she's the first female signed to Def Jam. Oh, okay. From Detroit, this like in 90, 89, 90. Still might have been eight. I'm not even sure it was the eight was the 90s yet, mm -hmm. So this before the 90s, whole 90s era. But yeah, man, we done heard our keep. It's good to see young niggas reaping the benefits. Because mm -hmm. at some point, you know what I'm saying, it was gonna happen, it just took us a minute. But we was knocking on the door, we cracked it open a little bit, boom. And everybody was not even running through it, and the door got blocked the hinges. So mm -hmm. I'm glad to see it. Did you, uh, did you ever run into like a, a Eminem or did you ever run into those guys back then? Yeah, we got time? songs together, bro. You got to do your homework for him. I, I got to really put you up. Yeah. I got songs with him. Oh, we try this album. Mm -hmm. Oh, this album. Just a song with me and Trick Trick on there. Mm -hmm. Called There They Go. That was on the Obi Trey second album. So, yeah, I cut business with Shady Records and Esco. I get published from the check for them right now. Oh, yeah, we can run a show from there. But him had that song with Trick. I don't know if you remember that one. Every we go, everywhere we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. said on the song, Rock Bottom, I see you. He did, he did. Boy. He said so, that. You know what I'm saying? He said that. Yeah, we've been blinked up, bro. That's, that's we dope. We've been for some years now. That's yeah. dope. That's dope. So I want to, um, y'all had a battle, bro. Y'all too. How did that, <laughs> what's up with that? How did that go? How, how did y'all come up with that? Mm -hmm. The title of the uh, project is Sibling Rivalry. So, even though it's not an actual rivalry, it was like going at each other right. on the uh, project, we wanted to like at least get at two people to kind of get that feel. Right. You know, like a brotherly rivalry. And then just also just to like show people that we can battle rap too if we want. Right, right. Now I'm here to explain the title. Ain't no way I'm able to let my brother kill me because this ain't the Bible. Fire. <laughs> it was like I said, it was really all the fun for real. That was dope. Mm -hmm. I, I liked it. Who should I contact? The new era shutting down, but we building. It's like a bomb threat. Y'all even got gay rappers now. It's got my mind stressing. My era, we think of Kelly's when we hear Nas X. Listen, bro, I got. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I like uh, the the concept, you know what I'm saying, the idea of it. But I be I be following you. You a rapper, rapper though. Like you, appreciate it. You rap, bro. Like I understand, like where you be coming from. Sometimes, like you don't like. It's like you like the culture. Like you love the culture. You know what I'm saying. Like you just you put in a lot of work. You know what I'm saying. I want to give your flowers on that. Appreciate and you it. you definitely got a hard style, bro. Like. Y'all two together, all three of y'all together. Is, is it gonna be like a, a whole album? Like, is it gonna be like a? What, what's y'all plans together, man? You never know. It just really depends on, you know, if it's meant to happen or not. We gotta just be organic. I mean, maybe down the line is to do one just so we all do one, but me and him deal one. Yeah, we gotta find some blood. Like. And then, um, you know, they try to work on their own stuff, so sometimes I stay out their limelight. You know what I'm saying? So they can earn their own keep, let people respect what they bring to the table. But we can do it anytime. Actually, I got a song on my new EP coming up with all three of us on it. Yeah, okay. On my new project. So you'll hear something, but yeah, that's something we might do out of line. I'm just trying to let them get their own thing, so don't always look like they're trying to just run or hide in my shadow all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They dope without me, so I want people to respect that. All right, was it was it your plan? You know what I'm saying? Them growing up, with did you or it was it's just no. in their blood, obviously. You know, not at all. They played football. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, baby, early he won two state titles of cash tech. The first two of them. Well, okay. Oh, <laughs> he played the Crockett. Okay. Yeah, I heard went to Central first, and I took him on the east side of Crockett. He played over there. 
I'm right under Brandon Graham and all them. Not Brandon Graham, but the Eagles right now. But, um, yeah, I didn't never want them to have a pressure rapper. Right, so I didn't right. do no, like Joe Jackson lined up all my kids and making me a rap and do this. <clears throat> I didn't want them to do that. They want right. to do it. They got to organically want to do it. Right. So I kept on playing sports. My concern as a father to keep my son out the street and running Stand around doing the shit we had to do. Stand First and foremost, before rapping and all that kind of stuff. So they play sports. Big Hurt Network, my little dog, my little son, my hurt. So what up, man? They winning 30 tonight. Cuz for life. Another championship probably this year. Halftime right now, we chilling. You know what I'm saying? You got something to say you want to say, man? No. Or you go back to the game and finish this? No, they weak. Okay, <laughs> it was good. So they started doing it because they around it all the time. Right. Around me, around Jane, around all the other cats that's making that's going in the city. We all know each other. I'm at events, I'm taking on her to shows I'm doing, he on the age, he get in the clubs with me. He don't drink and that shit and like that, smoking that, so he come to this to rap, he meeting all kinds of major cats in the city that we all fuck with it. You know, so he's around it all the time. Right. And so he started doing, I started seeing little papers and raps on him, like, he's right. trying to rap. So, you know, he let me hear some one day, I was like, he got potential. And he got kept doing it, and he got good at it. And he did the same thing, right under his big brother. He started doing it. I always kept on doing something else. It never made them feel like they got to try to do what I do. Right. Sometimes parents, they do, they try to make their kids live their dream or live right. day, and they put too much pressure on But if they want to do it naturally and they good, then come on, let's do it. Right. And that's what happened. Yeah, that's understandable. That's very understandable. So, so where was it like when you was like, you had the rock bottom thing going on, you you know, with your peers, you got, you know, street lords mm -hmm. and everybody like, how was that during that time? Did you feel like, did you feel like the best at the time? Like, I know you, you know, very motivated, motivational person, you know what I'm saying? Like, did you feel like I'm still one of the greatest still, you know, like, before it was after the math war, when you started in the 80s, did you feel like you was gonna be one of them guys? Yeah, I knew I had time, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, to me, the fans validate you and all that. Right. So I never really got enough to worry about that too much, but yeah, at a certain time, you see where your skill level at, you see the kind of shit you're doing, and then we really feel serious with that pen, man. We don't really be, man. we don't just talk that, yeah. just talking, we really be talking, yeah. talking. Sometimes people don't even catch us some stuff, but we always been in that, you gotta realize, like I told you, we started in the 80s, basically, that kind of year. So back then, wasn't a lot of people really look at for our the city, we said the people our name, but they was all trying to, yeah, they feet way like us. They just, you know, they was a little bit before we were. Mm -hmm. But our people we looked at too basically was the East Coast type like niggas. Right. And, and West Coast, that's what's out, like I said earlier. The Rock Kims and Big Daddy Kane, Run DMC, LL Cool J's. And, you know, we was running right to that type of level. Then Doug Ways and Q with their people, you know what I'm saying? And the Spice Ones, everybody else in the West Coast and East Coast, that's our measuring stick. We never really you know, try to compete. Like, for us, nobody here made me really step my shit up like that. Right. We really was writing on a whole nother level, man. But, you know, it paid off. We kept going with it, and we mixed the street shit with this lyrical shit. And, you know, and this real shit, because we don't got both ends. We street cats, but, you know, we got them bars, too, so. Mm -hmm. That was the difference between us and a lot of people. Yeah, that's what I was saying, yeah. man, because when I was growing up, I was hearing y'all. I swear, man, I thought y'all was like, at the BT Awards, and you know what I'm saying, like the, with them, like y'all was like y'all song was like so different. I, it took me like till I got older, like oh yeah, they they really from our city, like from here, you know, my big brothers and tell like no, nah, them niggas from Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? They from, I'm like, well, they from they here, they from here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know they can rap like that, and they from the city, like that's crazy. So it was like more of a like a um, y'all always been them guys to me, man. So and I want to ask you a question, you know what I'm saying? Like during that time. You know what I'm saying? R.P. played Ice Will, you know what I'm saying? R.P. him, man. When he came out with the song, Come Roll with him, Get Hot with him. I feel like he was like trying to make that song and bring peace to everyone and stuff like that. So when you heard that song, how did you feel? Like, how did you? I mean, I really didn't look at it like no kind of way, really. It was a song, it was a hot song, the city was fucking with it. You know, getting their respect on that. And I was really, we was busy working, man. We wasn't really, too deep in the West my house was doing none of that time. You gotta realize wasn't that many people even out in Detroit right. at that time. That's what I'm saying. Kind of one hand, I mean, groups really making noise like that. The street, rock bottom, street, little cheddar boy, mm -hmm. wasn't no nice of me and niggas. So 
You ain't got time to really sit down worrying about nobody else. Mm-hmm. Niggas trying to get on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. focusing on what we doing. So, you know, we know who did what and who made what kind of noise. We pay attention to the street. Because at the same time, again, like I told you, there wasn't no social media. So ain't like niggas sitting around nothing trending and they, oh, damn, what did they drop? And it just, you hear, you gonna hear. We working, we ain't, that's what niggas understand, man. That whole era was more of a brand. Sometimes you didn't get to hear something until a couple of days later because they had to be word of mouth. Right. When no niggas posting nothing, you can go on nigga page and see, oh, okay. It's just, you know, you gonna hear or you hear in the club or you gonna hear at the strip club or at the radio to get the bike on it. Besides the block, niggas on the block, you might hear niggas riding past playing it, but that's how it works. So we was, we was just busy working, man, you know what I'm saying? But we know who they, they was doing, and we know whoever else was doing what they were doing. Right. So those niggas making noise, doing their thing, these motherfuckers on just getting our shit going. It's like, I, it's like your lyricism was like my favorite, you know what I'm saying? I did. Growing up, just understanding rap, you know, and understanding how, you know, a street dude can do wordplay and, you know, just knowing your sound, it was like very unique to me, you know what I'm saying? And I just want to end that one off like that. Much respect, man. For sure, for sure, man. How do, you, how do y'all feel about the generation now with rap? Just knowing where your father came from and just comparing it, how do y'all feel about that now and back then? It's different. It's a little different. Uh, just with your mom, you know, it's more of, uh, hip hop to more like street and more to it, it, it kind of changed every like 10 years it feel like you know they was more like street what they was going through from street now it's more like sometimes kind of antique some term with songs and it's more about production like back in the 90s and uh, 80s they, it wasn't the greatest production but now it's more like banging beats and mm-hmm. It's like less lyricism. So like it was like, raw back then. Like yeah, was back really, then it was more lyrical. You know but saying? like the beats probably wouldn't just wouldn't carry the song or not. But the beats carry the song. The lyrics probably like it's just it go along with the beats. So right. That's how that's how it sounds to me. That's how understand how you feel. Pretty much like the same way he feel. Honestly, it don't really matter. Nobody really care about the lyrics like that for real, unless you like popular. That's really what it's like to me. It's just like kind of like. Popular for real nowadays. It's like a, like an image, like a you know. Yeah, what I'm it's more so image. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't really gotta have no talent for real now. No, no, you gotta have an RB. That's it. It's still fan base. Wow, but it's still like I said, it's still fan base. Started at like that little lyrics. You know yeah, like it's the lyrics. Yeah, that one. I know what you're saying. You're saying you mean the majority, the majority, yeah. So you know what I'm saying. That's true because that's what you hear most of. Real rap, this, that, niggas run around, they got ops and this and that. But I'm good, I ain't got no ops. I had ops 20 something years. <laughs> <laughs> I can't rap my ops and all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Not knocking niggas, they out here in the field for real like that, you know, get it together. But that ain't really the air we was on, bro. We really was just pushing the bars and telling the story, the story about Detroit because we didn't have nothing out for niggas to listen to. Niggas didn't know about Detroit, really, you know what I'm saying? So my eyes floodgated with a lot of Detroit shit. Right. So that part of it, that's the part that I like, just because we getting that looks, man. And opportunities for the young cats. Y'all made the soundtrack flood Detroit. Like that's what, that's how I feel about it. Like, Put the stat down. Like you said, we didn't have, we, it wasn't, we didn't have no identity, like like everywhere else had. So I feel like, right. like you and a lot of other other artists from back in the day created that soundtrack. I feel like a lot of guys when they be rapping the way they rap, it wasn't for y'all. And I, I don't think people really <coughs> understand that. Understand you know what I'm saying? They, cause especially the world, they looking at it as, oh, who hot right now? But yeah, they don't you know. know what I'm saying man, a lot of horses put in it, bro. Even before, like I said, so I'm gonna swipe the guys who maybe didn't get the citywide notoriety, mm-hmm. but they was out there with videos and putting music out, but it just wasn't no big machine to promote. To push it Social down. media is a big tool, man. That make everything a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? To get seen and all of that. Videos back then, man, was really cost some money. We shot like one yeah. video right by that bitch like twenty thousand <sighs> that video. You know what Ooh. I'm saying? Now you can just get an iPhone, you good and that shit. Yeah. 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 So all that lets you know the difference yeah. on how to get stuff marketed and promoted and the cost effects of it's cost effective now. Mm-hmm. Back then niggas only could do something like, bro, we ain't even got no deal or nothing going on. We losing though. We already spending money putting just get the music going and get it out of here. And then we still gotta pay the video this stuff, so it costs a lot with no way to get it really seen. Right. Yeah. Unless they, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, that's a lot of outlets, so that's what's up. Okay, 
that's the best. That's, that's dope. I, I like how you know you said that song because it's like it's kind of like a thing where now and back then it was like you got you had tapes, you had CDs, then what? You know, but now you just got what the internet. Ain't nobody selling no tapes. Do you think that was like that's an advantage too? Like you can just download it quick, YouTube quick, everything quick. I mean, yeah, it's definitely easier to get it to people, you know what I'm saying? But it's a giving the curse, too. Everybody can take <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. yeah. That's a million records, so, man. And it's 8 million people, so you're going to all these different groups. But I ain't knocking that part. That's mm-hmm. business. But, you know, back then, like I say, we didn't have all the outlets to get seen and promoted. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't a thousand groups either, so if your shit was dope, you're going to get a good look, at least from the people. And word of mouth, I had to do the rest, you know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. Now we ain't got to just rely on word of mouth. We, okay, look, I mean, where y'all, y'all you went up okay. there. So, you know, it's a gift and a curse every time something get better. I think technology get better because you're getting this, but then this part. You're something that took away something, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. And um, I don't know if, you know, a lot of people know, you was doing movies back then, too. Like, oh, yeah. you know, before yeah. Tubi, you know what I'm saying? Like, you... Yeah. Was a go, bro. He could act, bro. Big Hurt can act, bro. Like he's a cold actor. I just want everybody to know, man. Big Hurt, bro. He's a cold actor. You know, you know, baby. We get a few now. I'm getting twisted. Like I say, hey, we got some coming this summer too. Oh yeah. Okay. We do. We vamping the project. We were very revamping it. That back when I told three one three. That's the one. Yeah. You know, so you'll see it's different roles though on this one, but it's dope. Okay. Wow. Plus we did that five K one clip them pile AJ Johnson too like an O five and shit. People be forgetting about that gun mm-hmm. mouth and all that. Mm-hmm. It's getting worse. What's gonna be war on the streets for real? Yeah, I'm gonna handle everything, don't worry, okay? You can't trust nobody nowadays, you feel me? Damn, protect the king too, ask about the piece of AJ Johnson, man, so uh, you know. Been doing it. Yeah man, been doing it for real with the movies. Lyricism, the music, you know what I'm saying? The, the, and then I want to point out another thing. It's a lot of artists in Detroit, but it's not a lot of artists that can come out with hits, generational hits. Like these are generational hits that that I've been playing since I was a little kid. Doctors gonna be working on them, yelling clear. Well, the to the clear. The airport too high. Well, I'm on the train with this red. Still to this day, from y'all, you know what I'm saying? You know, it'll never go away. Like, you know, Pops got his hits that'll never go away. Everybody got their hits from their city that'll never go away. And you are one of the artists that got hits that'll never go away. Like, that'll never, like, it's stamped. Like, this is the Detroit music that they were listening to. You know what I'm saying? Back then, like, this is one of the dudes that you're going to have to dig up and look in. Like, yo, mm-hmm. he's one of the fathers of it. That's Put him up there. Yeah. Like, like, that's where it's at right now. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, because time moves on, her. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be five years from now and ten, bro. And your name is still going to be. Because that come from when you write music this time, is, bro. We really, we wasn't writing microwave music. You know what I'm saying? That shit, we had to stick with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's that real root. And it wasn't, it was for a real reason. He wasn't just rapping just for bread. We were not even right. getting a lot of money back then. They was want to respect, bro. When you when you rapping from the gut, because it's respect is involved, and then you tired of the, the world overlooking your city and where you from. You know, that shit gonna be, you know, like I say, we're rapping on another level, bro. We used to be serious with this shit. Man. And that's why it lasts, and the music too, you know what I'm saying? The cats were thinking music was just as hungry. You know what I'm saying? So. We don't do stuff now just to do something quick. A lot of stuff now called microwave music is quick. It's time for another project, boo. Might be one or two on there. The rest of it just kind of album filler, boo. We never really roll like that. We only we did that album. We might do one a year. Mm-hmm. That's it, man. Cause that whole the whole album you, you let it play. On fire. You know what I'm saying? So, and shout out to Al Newton too, man. Detroit Dreams, man. Check that out too. Cause that's okay. another latest movie I did while we talking about movies. Okay. I'm gonna slide down, big up the new light skin films. What up, my dog?